Friday. I am so excited. We made it to another Friday. This week honestly flew by, and I think that's in part because we had some really, really dope people on the show. We had Amber Lou yesterday, and we had Nico, Lou, Nico Lowell on Wednesday. What is English? Can you tell? It's the end of the week. But today, we have another incredible guest, and he's going to school me in some chess. You might know who I'm talking about, but real quick, if you're new to Guest House, this is the show where all of your favorite people's gamers, streamers, musicians, actors, athletes, whoever it is, are going to come hang out, play some games, expose some hidden talents, and hang out with all of you. So make sure you're tuned into chat. Join our Discord, um, hang out with us. We're gonna have some polls, things like that to keep you all involved, ask some questions. We wanna be asking our guests all of your questions, your burning questions. But without further ado, I really wanted to introduce today's guest because he's amazing and he also just had an incredible win this morning. What's up, Hikaru? It's good to be here. Uh, it was a crazy morning. I played a match of chess today against Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, um, and I did find a way to win. So I'm really, really happy uh, and just. It's great to be here with, with all you guys. How are you? Uh, how are you feeling right now? Are you like whooshed? I'm I'm a little bit drained, but I think when you come off the load, it's sort of like there's the adrenaline kick where you realize what you've done. So yes. um, it's only the first day of our match, but it's it's great to start off with a victory. And so just keep going and refresh, chill out here. Yeah. And um, and then tomorrow morning I'll be back at it again. Yeah, I, we're going to keep it light today, but as you do know, because your chat's been dying to ask you to play this game, we are going to play 5D chess later in the stream. Mm -hmm. So are you looking forward to that? Yeah, I am looking forward to the 5D chess. I realized, though, we're playing Fall Guys, and while you were talking, <laughs> I actually started a game. So oh, no! I okay. It out. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Fall Guys. Um, as I think most people know, I'm going to be playing the Twitch Rivals event, so I need to brush yep. up on that. But then later, uh, well, you're, you're going to be playing chess, and then also 5D yes. chess. So a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Looking forward to it. A lot of stuff. After this, after we play some Fall Guys, we're going to do a little bit of a teach a noob moment where Hikaru is going to teach me to play chess. I only really know as far as what each piece does. Don't know any strategy or anything. But first, we're going to do teach a noob with Hikaru and teach him how to play some Fall Guys, which is very indicative of what my gaming skill set is. <laughs> Just silly, fun. Um, I'm sending you an invite, so whenever you're ready to join... I have a new suit on today. If you were watching on Wednesday, I'm now a cactus. I don't know when I acquired this, but I have become a cactus somehow. And you haven't played this game until today, right? Correct. Okay, so that's good. That's good. But you're generally really good at all the games you play. Some. I'm not good at FPS. I'm a little bit too old for FPS, but I'm not. <laughs> but... I'm not good at them either. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if I can rely on my age for that because I'm pretty young. But I just hand-eye coordination somewhat evades me. Well, I think if you're not like eight, 18 to 20, uh, okay. you're, you're a boomer for FPS games in general. So... Oh, okay, I'm a boomer then. So yeah, I just know with yeah. FPS if you're not really, really young, like just past your teenage years, then yeah. uh, it's it's too late to be good at them. Okay, I remember. Um... I remember when I first started getting into, like, so I love League of Legends. When I first started getting into, like, pro gaming, I was amazed when someone told me, like, yeah, they usually retire mid-20s or, or a little above that because, you know, your reaction time just slows down. Right. And I was like, that's so young. But I guess pro sports is very similar. Is there, like, an age cap on chess or is it kind of, are you infinite? Um, well, with chess now, because of technology, people yeah. tend to um, tend to peak around their late 20s, and they okay. retire sometime in their late 30s or oh, early wow. 40s. So that's still young. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing with chess is it takes so so much memory yeah. um, and pattern recognition that the, the amount okay. of energy you have to put in, into the game um, to keep getting better and keep going, it's uh, you, you, you just sort of don't have the energy at a certain point. Right. I understand that. By the way, chat right now really, really loves your shirt. I know you've already gotten a lot of compliments from Ben's staff on that. <laughs> is that your, like, did you wear that this morning? On the, uh, no, on... I didn't. I did not, actually. Do no, you get, you get, you have to dress pretty fancy, right, for... Uh, sometimes you do, sometimes? not always. Is there, like, different events have different dress codes? Yeah, some events, um, especially the events that are, uh... That are that are online. You sort of just have to wear a dress shirt. The, the okay. old events that used to be. Whoops. No, I was eliminated. Uh, Did you make it? No. No. no okay. I was good. Okay. Too. Yeah. So hit escape, and let's try and start over. You can hit escape now and hit OK. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'll trap you and you can't get out of it until the next show starts. So, I'm always mashing the escape key as fast as possible. 
Do you think Fall Guys is going to become your new favorite game, or maybe um, not? Um, it, it depends how good I am. It seems <laughs> uh, games the games that are really simple for me that I'm okay at when I start. Generally, yeah. I tend to put a lot of time into them. Yeah. So it is possible. It, okay. it is possible that I'll end up like playing this way too much. And considering yeah. that I'm going to be playing Twitch Rivals and that's a team event, I yes. don't want to embarrass myself too much. Like I can just see, I can <laughs> see that there, there are quite a few of my friends who've been playing. And anytime I pop over to their streams, I see like they they show like a win rate, or it's like you know I'm going to win this game, so I'm feeling feeling a lot of pressure to uh, to perform in Fall Guys when Twitch Rivals <laughs> comes. Don't want to look like the, the worst player ever. Well, we'll get some practice in today, and then and then you'll you'll have all the skills to practice on your own stream too. Right. I'm sure I'm sure your your fans would love to watch that too. They really love your shirt though. Yeah, I, I think um, I wore the shirt. Uh, there was um, I know it was the final that I played against Magnus a couple of months ago, but there there was a stream when I when I wore it, and then okay. I was I was watching Forrest and playing chess, uh, another Twitch streamer, okay. and his chat and my chat just kind of went to town and started doing a lot of memes regarding the shirt. So I thought it would, was a good time to bring it back. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. I mean, that's also probably why a lot of them are freaking out right now too, is because it's like nostalgic for them, or not nostalgic, but like an in joke for for your uh, fan base. That's super fun. So today you played um, you played Magnus and you beat him and it was in four games, right? Uh, yeah, we played a played a mini match of four games okay. and um, and uh, yeah, I won the first match, but it's a best of seven, so I still okay. need to win three more three more individual matches um, in order to uh, to to win win the whole series. Okay, so it can go it can go as short as four days if you sweep, or as many as seven days. Correct, yes. Gotcha. And then how many matches can you play max a day? What is its best uh, it could of? It be seven. Okay. So that's a lot. So theoretically, <laughs> you could play 49 games. Correct, yes. That's a lot of chess. Yeah, it's. Um, I think that's the difference between online. Normally, when you look at... Um, oops. Ah, I just fell. Oh, no. Still good, I guess. Yeah, there's only a few people in so far. I don't know where you're at. Oh yeah, you just run up that um, the blue wall yeah. on the yeah that one yeah you just yeah, keep running I'm, up. I'm so new to this game that's that's kind of weird. Yeah, and I've I'm all right. Eliminated. Let's hit escape. Yep. Yeah, this game is uh, it's it's just fun though, and I'm sure it's like it's a lot more lighthearted than what you had to do this morning. You know, it requires a little bit less brain power. Maybe you know, maybe it's maybe not if you're a pro profile guys strategy player but yeah i feel like it's one of those games though where i think there's a learning curve and it doesn't seem that hard i think, yeah. I think the less sort of sort of key binds and things you need to remember the easier it is to get good at so I, I do expect to be somewhat decent at this once i learn the patterns yeah of course and there's tons of there's tons of maps too so uh, or shows rather i should say the individual maps quote unquote in fall guys are called shows if you mm -hmm. haven't played fall guys anybody watching at home um and yeah, so you'll start to learn like your favorites, the ones that always trip you up or the ones that you're like, I know I got this in the bag. Um, for some reason, that Tilt-A-Whirl one that we just played is always one that trips me up. Okay. I feel like I okay. always get sent off the edge, which is what happened to you. I right. always end up doing that. So this is the gate one that we saw earlier. Basically, there's gonna be real gates and fake gates mm -hmm. um, and we have to try and get through them. Or no, this isn't the real gate, fake gate. These are the moving gates. Excuse me. I don't know my fall guys as well. So it's just about all about timing and anticipating like the speed that they're gonna like rise and fall. I forget what suit you're wearing. What are you wearing in this? In I'm this wearing game? like the pineapple actually. Oh, I love that. Matches your shirt. Yeah. It's perfect. We didn't even plan that. Or did you plan that? Did you? No, that no, I did not plan that. I love that. I have a little cactus guy on. There is also one of those conspiracy theories that the whatever suit you're playing can change your um, your movement speed. Okay. I don't think there's actual like proof behind that. Oh, okay. So by the way, at the end one, when you're running down the ramp, you uh -huh. have to jump. Otherwise, you fall through. Yeah. You jump over the gate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dang. Dang. Not fall guysing well today, my friend. Terrible start. It's okay. We can only go up from here, though. That is true. I feel Start like I'm, at the I'm lowest the point. <laughs> All we can do is get better. Also, you're excused because you just beat the world champion, so you're allowed to uh, you're allowed to have a few flubs in fall, guys. I don't like being bad at games, though. I, so I feel that. I, I'm very competitive. It's just practice. <laughs> just practice. We're just learning. See, this is why I would never play chess against you, because I would just get lumped. Actually, right. I will be playing chess against you today. 
Yeah. But but right. I kind of have. I'm I'm gonna Still be scripting. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be scripting a little bit. There's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a little bit stacked for me. So this one, okay. So there is uh, somebody on each team that has basically like cooties, like a little pink cloud around them. Okay. And the point is not to get cooties. Um, we can exit out because we're not actually playing. Oh, oh, you exit out. If you look at the back monitor, just so you can mm -hmm. see a different oh, like okay, game okay. mode. Right, right, right. Yeah. So your point would would be to like run around and try not to get. The mm -hmm. cooties, essentially, and whoever, whichever team gets infected fully first is uh, the loser. Right. And then that entire team's eliminated. So it's like a quick, big elimination. Um, so there are some maps that are, they randomly put you into teams. There are others. Uh, if we're, like, queued together, like we've been in the lobby together, mm -hmm. we'll always be on the same team if we're both qualified into that okay. show. Um, but yeah, they it, it can kind of be, that's one of the, the harder parts of the game is navigating when you have a team and you have to work together with other people and you can't communicate with them. There's no mm -hmm. like in-game chat. Right. So if you're like, oh, we should like kind of do this, this should be our strategy. There's no way to convey that. Um, which is the only part that can get difficult. There's this one called, like, there's this one where you have to get all of your eggs in a basket. <laughs> oh, I've, I saw um, I saw another guy playing playing that one. Yeah, so hard, yeah. that one. Especially right. because, you know, some people are like, oh, we need more people on defense, and no one's defending your eggs, and you're trying to steal from other people, and then all of a sudden you get back to your nest, and everything's gone. And you're like, ah, someone right. should have stayed. And it would have been better if you could communicate. All right. So it's the same. Looks like the same, same, uh, same map. Yeah. Exactly. It seems that um, what I found, because I've been playing a lot recently, is mm -hmm. that there's like a few maps that are typically the first one. Okay. So it doesn't seem like most of the time you don't get some of the other ones until the later levels. This one is. It's usually this one, the twirly one, or the seesaw one. Those are usually the um, the earlier ones. Also the one with the fake gates. But we're on the same one. So hopefully maybe we'll get some redemption on this. So I was being super serious. I know what I would do. Like I would literally make notes um, on, on what the timing is between each gate and how often they go up or down. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, because some of the gates uh, go pretty slowly. Some of them pause at the top for a while. Some of them keep a consistent pace. Right. And then some of them go very, very quick. Okay, I'm, I'm so yeah, them. these four ones, good. the outer ones, take a while. They'll stay up for a while. Mm -hmm. But then the inner ones go really quick. So just when you slide down this ramp, remember, you have to jump. You have to time it so you can jump over the gate because there's a little gap. So yeah, I felt like Oh, right I missed it. Okay. Yep. Okay, okay. It takes like a minute to get the rhythm of it. It's super tricky. No, I got but, it yeah. there. I got it. Yes, Are you in? I qualified. Oh. Yes. Oh, I was eliminated. Keep going, though. Keep going. Go to the <laughs> okay. next show. I will spectate you. Keep going. I'm going to spectate okay. you. Okay. All right. No pressure, right? Fall guy shot calling. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I timed that perfectly for jumping right over. It's good. so satisfying when you get that jump perfect on the first one. Mm -hmm. Love that. Love that for you. All right. Let's see what you got next. Next up is... Chat, what's your favorite Fall Guys show if you have been playing or if you've just been streaming a lot of it? Let's see. Car with the pineapple shirt. If it's not already an emote on your Twitch channel, you're definitely going to have oh, to is. make... It okay, is. okay. <laughs> I was going to say, if definitely. it's not already one, then you're definitely going to have to do it. I'm going to ask you some chat questions. Sure. Okay, point of this one, don't fall off, basically. Okay. So it's the cylinders have gaps in them and things okay. like that. I need to try and find you. Okay. They don't make it easy. Do you have a pop button? Oh, no, you have a wolf's head on. There you are. Yeah, they don't make it easy. I don't know. This doesn't seem that, that hard yet. Not yet. It's just, I think, making sure, like, you're running. But, yeah, see? Like, you can, uh... It takes you a minute to get up. So sometimes if you jump and you flop, then, like you'll end up kind of dangling yourself and not being able to get up. You mm -hmm. also can run between them if there's no gap. You don't have to jump between them. Okay. They are like seamed together. Because sometimes if you jump and like gravity takes you and you fall, what gets annoying is some people will actually grab onto you and try and like pull you over the edge or like push you over the edge. Some people are super into just trying to uh, mess other people up. Oh, uh, no. Oh, I... Oh, see? So bad. It's tough. No, it's tough. That, that so one's bad. hard. We can escape. Um, hey, chat wants to know... The Jammy JK wants to know what started your interest in chess. 
Um, mainly it's because my brother played chess uh, mm -hmm. when 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 we were in California, and he was very young. He started taking chess lessons, and he played in yeah. national competitions around the around the country. And naturally, I had to go with my mom. And um, so yeah. being around it, that really got me interested because it's what my brother was doing. Okay, that's awesome. Your brother was older than you, I assume. Yes. Okay. Cool. That's awesome. Does he still play? Uh, no, he doesn't. He stopped many years ago. Kind of one of the things that's hard with chess is it's similar to a lot of games. You tend to get hard stuck at a certain level, and kind of okay. overcoming that and trying to keep on improving is very, very difficult. And um, chess is also one of those things where I think when you're really, really good at it at the start, where it all comes naturally and you yep. don't have to work very hard, um, when, then when you do hit that, you hit that wall and you get hard stuck, um, you don't really necessarily have the tools to overcome it to keep improving because you didn't really have to work hard to get to that point to begin with. You were just very naturally right. talented. So what's been, what's your tool, what's your advice to anyone who is hard stuck at a certain level in anything, I guess, and how do you, like, how do you face that? How do you overcome that yeah. and keep improving? I think the main thing is you just have to keep keep doing what you're doing. You have to really trust the process. And if you are studying and you're trying to get better mm -hmm. at, the, at the game, whatever the game is, and you're doing all these right things, you're watching the videos, you're, you're, you're trying to do the right technique, is knowing that eventually it's going to come and not really sort of to get discouraged and give up. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Um, I think whenever I get people asking me, I'm in a band, by the way, whenever I get uh, people who come up to me on tour and ask me if I have any um, advice for like people starting out in music, my thing is just to always focus on improving, never get comfortable where you are. Because I think when we get comfortable, we get complacent. And if we tend to think, oh, I've, I've gotten this far, I'm good where I am, you're going to get stuck there. If you right. always think of where you're going next and you never focus on where you just are, I think you'll always be having that forward moving mentality. It's about like, I, th I think it's like, part of it is just like keeping that inertia going, always moving, don't make it stop. Mm -hmm. Keep that momentum forward. Someone, let me see, another question. Junes and three would like to know what your favorite chess piece is. I don't know, um, do you get this a lot? Sometimes. Okay. No, I just fell down. I'm at the bottom too. Run up the blue wall. Yeah, you're on the left side. Yeah, not good. Yeah, I, I, my favorite chess piece these days is probably the, uh, the the knight. Okay. That would be my favorite chess piece at the moment. What's the most underrated chess piece? Like um, the unsung probably hero. Probably the bishop. Probably okay. the bishop is the most. Oh, dang. Yeah, got eliminated. Not even close. Not even. I um, know. I'm also distracting you, so I apologize. No, no, no. no. Wow. <laughs> All the questions. I'm not, I'm not a pro at this game. <laughs> if, if I was a pro at this game, I think I could, I could multitask. That's one of the things I do very well on Twitch. Is like Hit escape. playing playing games of chess. Um, well, well, talking to chat, yeah. and so I think if I was, if I had gotten used to this, just the muscle memory, probably would be a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but I'm not expecting. I don't have high expectations. <laughs> For this? So, no, no, definitely not. You will, you will. I no. feel like once you start playing it alone and no one's uh, interrogating <laughs> you, you're and like there's no pressure, you're gonna start getting really good at it really fast, Hopefully. and then it'll become muscle yeah. memory. So, so to answer your question, the most underrated piece would be the bishop yep. because it's kind of like a sniper. It's a piece that attacks Ooh. from long distance, but it's sort of hard to understand if, if you aren't used to using it um, right but it is one of those pieces that's most powerful but if you're not really advanced or you don't really have a lot of understanding of the game you just assume that it's just you don't you don't understand the the importance right is there a piece then kind of the opposite question and there might not be an answer for this is there a piece that's overrated that people think is is more op than maybe it is um, well, I mean, the queen is, is definitely the most OP piece in the game. Right. Um, but it, at times, like, the, I guess the thing is that at the start of the game, it's not the most powerful because it's a piece that you don't move out right away okay. for the most part. So it's just one of those pieces that you think it's really powerful, but it's not a piece that you use a lot at the very start of the game. Okay. So do you think people maybe, like, put too many eggs in the queen basket sometimes? Oh, yes. For yeah, sure. definitely. <laughs> definitely people try to use the queen to attack, but you need to use the other pieces as well. Right. I feel like that would be something that I would do. It's knowing that the queen has so much like you can do you can go anywhere with it in any amount of spaces, I, I think. Right. Um, yeah, it goes any amount of spaces in any, any direction. Yeah, so for me, like a complete noob, I I would assume I'd be like, yeah, the queen's the best piece in the game. Like I'm just going to, you know, go all in on my queen full send. And uh, maybe that would cause me not to utilize the other pieces as much when I should. Right. I'm gonna keep that in mind for when we're playing yeah, each other. Yeah, when we play chess later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure not to rely too much on my queen. Oh, dude, just dove straight on me. I think I am pretty far back right now. You're further back than I am. I think maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure oh, where no, you are. Oh no. 
If you fall back on this one, you respawn. There are a couple maps that you can like full fall if there's like jelly. Um, not all jelly is bad, but there's one that's called like the slime, slime climb or something. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Slime climb and like if the slime reaches you and you fall off and you fall into the slime, you are a big dead. Oh wow. Big dead. I'm not good at that one. I don't think I've actually ever gotten all the way through that one, unfortunately for me. Oh, oh, big jumps, big jumps, big jumps. This one always would get me when, I mean, I think I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna make it on this one, but this one would always get me in the beginning. No! You just fall? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's hard because it depends on how many seesaws in you are to assert to the segment. Like if you fall off at the first one, then you're not really losing too much ground. But if you fall at the second and the third, then you're like oh, no. oh, losing a decent amount. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I'm so close and I fall all the way back. I... Yeah, I'm not. Where are you? Right. No, you could. I'm, I'm way you could. Back oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm way uh, back. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. I'm gonna. I could try and play defense at the end, but I'm not very good at grabbing people. Yeah, I'm trying. Wait, you're right there. Oh wait, okay. I was the last. Yeah. It was 37 out of 38. I'm yeah. wiping though. I'm wiping. Let's go. We're getting you qualified. My goal is to get you uh, two rounds in, two shows in. I should have qualified that one. I, I really should. You were close. You were close. Sometimes it really is like you get unlucky. Also in that one, like I said, it depends on. The, like how other people are jumping on the seesaws. Mm -hmm. You could be waiting on one for the other one in front of you to tilt your way, and then everyone's just sending it onto the other end. Right. So that's that's part of the, the frustrating aspect of it. But it's, it's it gets addicting. Once you start getting that muscle memory down, it gets super addicting. Yeah, I could totally see myself playing this for hours on end. Let's pull while we're queuing. Um, Kimchi Poppy wants to know, what other games do you like to play besides chess? Besides chess, so yeah. I can categorize that a few ways. Like they're okay. video games, they're board games, um, and they're like arcade games from the old, from the Ooh, old days. So. Can you give like your top of each, your top one of, from each of those? Sure. So like for arcade games, I'm I'm extremely good at Pac-Man. Um, Love that. So I like Pac-Man and Galaga from like arcade. From yep. um, from board games, I, I really like. Well, obviously I like chess. Um, and then probably I like Risk. Risk would be my second second favorite. Um, yeah. I and I also Risk. like Settlers of Catan, and then probably, oh, probably I love that. in terms of um, in terms of video games, Fortnite still probably remains my actual favorite. Really? Yeah. No way. For some reason, I would not think you liked Fortnite for some reason. I yeah, Fortnite's. I oh, what am I doing? I feel like for Fortnite is like you're either a Fortnite person or you're not. I have never played, but I think I would really like it. Yeah, I, I like Fortnite. Um. Actually, a game that I think I'm going to like that I am not very good at is Osu. Okay. So that's another one that I want to play some of, at least. Yeah. Why am I so bad at this game? <laughs> I can't seem to get the rhythm. It's so... I don't know if it's so opposite of chess, but it's, like, so silly, like, that sometimes it's more about just, like, committing than, yeah, like, I mean, overthinking. I do like games that are, um, that are fairly easy to learn. Because, yeah. like, chess is a very easy game to learn, but it's, um... Oh, I'm doing well. Now I'm doing Ooh, well. Okay, no, I'm doing bad. No, I'm doing bad. I'm doing bad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I, I like games that are easy to learn, but yep. kind of very hard to master. And so like, like when I look oh, at this, I like that. So when I look at like this, this like Fall Guys, it seems um, like very easy to learn, but kind of hard to sort of get a grasp of all of where you're supposed to go. And I'm really bad on this level, I've noticed. Dang. This one I'm really bad on. Yeah. This it is this one always tripped me up. It took me a while before I qualified the first time on this one. I, I know what you're saying. I think I agree with that because, you know, sometimes so I started playing League of Legends and the only reason I really got into that game um, be, was because so many hit escape by the way oh, yeah. was because so many of my friends played it and I would uh, so just you I just have to wait. That's the only thing now is just once their game starts you can hit escape. Okay. But um, the only re like way I got into League was through my friends because it is a steeper learning curve to really like get into the game. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can kind of just jump in and be like playing at, at, at like a normal level. Uh, there's a pretty steep learning curve. So I agree with that. If I'm playing by myself, especially, I want a game that's like easy entry level and then I can I can do the climb, I can grind it out. Let's see, Um, chat, what win was your most memorable from Toxic1 underscore? 
Okay, so yeah, so my favorite um, favorite win. There are two games probably that stand out. Um, there was this game that I played against this Israeli Grandmaster Boris Gelfond, okay. um, where I sacked a queen on three consecutive moves, or I offered up a queen to be captured in order to create the checkmate, and that's probably the best well. game that I've ever played. And there was another game I played where I did sacrifice the queen for one one pawn and one bishop um, in this, against this Polish player, Michael Krasnikow, in uh, in Barcelona, Spain, in I believe 2007. Wow, so those good are my memory. Two games. Yeah, that was that's awesome that you can remember every detail. I feel like sometimes people are like, what was your favorite show? And I'm like, I don't know. All right, but we're going to be right back. Stay tuned because Hikaru is going to teach me how to play some chess next. We're going to put him back in where he's comfortable. But later, he's going to be playing 5D chess. I know you guys are super stoked to see that. Stay tuned. We'll see you in a bit. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We are hanging out with Grand Master Hikaru, who just beat the world champion Magnus this morning in their tournament. First game of the tournament, right? First match, yeah. First match? First match, yeah. It's a best of seven. In or, match yeah, format. match, not game, because yeah. you played four games today. Correct, yes. And if you're new to chess, we learned today that it could be seven games in a match, and it can be up to seven days of this tournament. So technically, they could have, well, I guess because you only played four today, it can't actually end up being 49 games now. Right, but it's going to be a minimum probably of at least like 24 to 30 games. That's a lot. Yeah. How do you keep up your stamina mentally for that the whole time? Because obviously, um, you don't want to hold back in a game, but you know that there's so many to come. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, since it's individual matches, you really want to try to get in the lead. So, right. so when you win, like today, when I won, when I won, I'm up one nothing. But kind of okay. keep every day just thinking about it as one match individually, because if you think about it as being seven matches, that's that's a lot of games, a lot of matches, right. um, and you're not going to be able to win it the next day. So mainly, I just try to have the approach of just taking it one game and then one match at a time, and mm -hmm. um, and then you know when you're getting closer to the finish line, certainly thinking about it. But it's still very early, so just one one game at a time, really. That's the best. Like that. Mentality. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're going to teach me how to, I guess, some chess strats right mm -hmm. now. I'm yes. going to be playing 1v1 online against somebody. Um, and I have not played chess in years. I know how the, the pieces move. I know like where they're allowed to go, but that's the end of it. I don't really know strategy. I know you capture the king to win. Um, mm, actually, you put the king in checkmate where it can't move. Okay. So you threaten to the, capture the king okay. and the king can't move. move threaten move to ca yeah. Yes. Checkmate, yeah. though, because yeah, check it can yeah. still move. Mm -hmm. All right, that's uh, and that's as far as we go, ladies and gents. Um, so, yeah, so I'm ready to start whenever. And then, so my first question is, you start out with your pawns usually, right? Yes. And the pawns can move up to two moves. My timer started. I have right. five minutes. When is it, when do you want to use those two spaces? And is there a time where you don't want to use those two spaces? Well, since you can only move two spaces on the first move, you yeah. normally want to move move up two squares. So, for example, uh, normally the two squares, do you see the squares? Two, two in front of the queen and two in front of your king. Yep. Those two central squares squares are probably the most important squares. Okay, game got aboard, so it'll it'll restart. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, it just restarted. Right. So okay, I would say so. play Yeah, that's good move. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. So normally the reason you want to do this is cuz you want to have space for bishops to move out. So okay. like you see how your your bishop on the dark square can you see the bishop yep. next to your queen? It it can move along this diagonal. So Should normally I move that normally now? that's why you want to bring pawns up in the center of the board. Yeah, okay. that's um there there are many good moves here. Okay. What about is moving that the um, the two e mm -hmm. pawn is that unwise because then the other pawn would be able to capture it on the next yeah, move? Yeah, that that would not be a good move. So okay. so what I would recommend you play here is bring your bishop out to this dark square. This f four. Two f four. Oh, uh, the other bishop. Uh, dark what? bishop. Yeah, that's the only one that can move. Your other bishop can't move. Two f four. Okay. Yeah. Cool far out yeah see i didn't know is it like do you want to advance really hard or do you kind of just slowly move up so like normally what you want to do is you want to bring out your bishops and your knights and get your king out of the center of the board now another question is do you know what castling is no definitely don't okay okay, okay. so so okay. like here for example you see how you have your king and you have your rook on on the light square to yeah. your to your left or your yeah. right sorry what you want to do is you want to get the bishop and the knight out of the way so that you can castle your king. This is um, a special technique. So here I'd recommend you push your pawn to e3, and one square in front of your king. e3. Okay. Yeah, because then I'll be able to capture that the uh, the knight if he captures my pawn, right? Correct. Yeah. So okay. you, 
Okay, now th this is a bad move uh, that your opponent played. So one thing you want to look at is you want to see how many of your opponent's forces are attacking your forces and yours are attacking. So if you look at this, this pawn yep. that he just moved, it's attacking your bishop. Okay. Because he's threatening to capture. Yep. But the bishop, can it capture him right, or my so, pawn? So like the basic thing you would look at is how many pieces can you capture the pawn with and how many pieces defend the pawn. Okay. So you see if, how, how many pieces are attacking this pawn? One. Two, two, two. And how many pieces does Black have defending the pawn? Or defending the pawn. Defending my pawn? No, his pawn. What, like if you capture the pawn, what, which Nothing. piece can cap? There's one piece. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, the, the knight, sorry. But you have two, and there's there, there are two pieces attacking the pawn, or ca threatening to capture the pawn, and your pawn is one 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 piece that's defending the, the pawn. So is it better, it's better to capture using my pawn, right? Because otherwise I could both, sacrifice. Both moves are good. But couldn't he then capture my, oh, if he captured my bishop, though, then I would capture his. Knight. So is it better to use my bishop then, because then I could, oh, no, I guess either way, it doesn't matter. Both moves are, both moves Okay, are I'm going pawn, I'm going pawn. That is the best move. Okay. Good. Wait, that makes me feel great. Thank you. I feel good about those, those poggers. So, so like mainly when you look at you look at this bishop. Now you have the pawn in the way, but you're up by one pawn. But the bishop was attacking on the diagonal down towards the pawn next to the queen. So like right now you see how you have this pawn. If this pawn was not on the square, your bishop would have a line towards the pawn next to the queen for okay. your opponent. So that's why normally the bishops are really really powerful pieces, but they attack from long distance. So like here, right. what you want to do is you're up one pawn. So you're okay. plus one um, by material because pawns are worth one, bishops and knights are worth three. Okay. The rooks are worth five, and the queen is worth nine. Wow. Okay. So right now you're ahead. Okay. Rooks are worth nine. Wow. No, no, queen. Queen is worth nine. Oh no, five, 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 five. Sorry. Yeah. Thinking too hard. Okay. So he just moved that knight. Right. So now remember what I said is you want to move, you want to get your king out of the middle of the board. So try to move that bishop yep. on the light square and then move the knight. Move so, the bishop how far up? I'm not going to tell you. You, you, have to, you have to make this on your own. Would B5 be unwise? It's completely fine. Would B4 be better? No, because then it would be captured by the pawn. So, so like what I would say is the main thing since you're so new to the game is you just don't want to blunder, blunder it where you move a piece to a square. Can it just be captured and you get nothing in return? I'm going, I'm going really, really low key with this. That's a great move. Okay. I feel better about that. So I'm trying to move my king to the outer edges of the board. Yeah, so, okay, so so now here, for example, if you if you look, your pawn is under attack. And my bishop. Okay, so so first things, how, how many pieces are attacking your pawn? How many how many of pieces two. can take? Right, and you're defending the pawn with? Mm, my bishop. So there are two pieces that are going to capture the pawn. Okay. And one piece that defends the pawn. Okay. So is, is there a way that, and, and actually so, secondarily, look at the, you, you have a pawn that guards your bishop. Right. So is there a way to defend this pawn again? This pawn on the dark square, e5? If I move it forward one, but then it'll capture my bishop. Right. But then I will capture its knight. So it, I guess it depends on what it deems, if it deems its knight worth the sacrifice. Okay, but try to move a piece where you can you can protect your, your pawn. Next, the, that pawn, yeah. Is there a piece you can move that you will protect it so when your opponent captures, you can capture, capture back twice? Capture back twice. So you want to defend the pawn with another one of your pieces. So when he takes the pawn, you'll be able to recapture. Well, right now, if he takes my pawn, can't my bishop attack him? But then he'll take back with his knight. Oh, right. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, What about and moving the pawn forward is... Pesh, you just give up the pawn for nothing in return. Right, okay, because he could capture it. Um, Shoot, okay. Uh, Is there a way to move... If I move my knight, if I move my g1 knight to uh, h3... Uh, other other square f3 f3 oh f3 f3 yeah yeah yes because yes. now you'll see you, you actually protect the pawn again okay so now you're defending this pawn with two your bishop and your knight okay your opponent's attacking it with two knights so if your opponent takes the pawn you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be ahead okay and so now i take his mm -hmm. so was that worth it for him it's reasonable. I mean, you, if I had this position, I would win this every single time because the material count is two. Okay. It's already plus one is too much being up one pawn. But okay, so now here's here's where I want you to castle your king. So take this king and try to move it over to the king, not the queen, the king, and try to move it over two squares to the dark square. Yeah. You can only move one at a time. Go to the G. G yeah. Let go on that square. Oh. So this is castling. You can do this one time a game, and you can castle oh. to the king side or to the queen side, to the, to the left of the queen okay. or to the right. 
left or right. Um, and so what it does is that your king is out of the center of the board, so it's much safer. It's much harder for your opponent to attack your king. Okay. So I'm running out of time. I'm at 29 seconds. It just runs down. Well, I think the time can be readjusted, but okay. it, it, this is not a competitive game, obviously. Um, but the games are meant to take five minutes. Yeah, well, okay, wow. then let, let, let's see, let's see. That's super aggressive. So what happens if my time runs out? I lose? You lose the game. What? No one told me this part. <laughs> well, you're very new to the game. That's yeah. one thing, like, players who are very new, like, there's this PogChamps term that's going to be happening on Twitch, and one thing that I, that's important that I stress to the players is that when they're... Okay, well, let's, let, let's focus. Yeah. It's your move. Um, so try to try to bring you. You've gotten. You've moved most of your piece from the original square. Yeah. Are there other pieces you can move from their original squares here? I guess just a pawn sure. forward. Yeah, that's a move. I don't. That was. I guess. Well, I guess if my if their bishop takes that pawn, then I take their bishop. Right. So now try to move more of your pieces. The 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 pieces that matter, not the pawns. Um. Okay. Is does it make any sense to move my other my so, light? So normally my light? When, you, when you move the knights, the general rule is you want to bring them towards the center part of the board, towards where your king and queen are, the original squares. Yeah. So it's so better if to I move... move it towards the center. Yeah, you had the right idea. Here? Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot because that you could see. You could have gone to the side of the board and there there's like when you move the knights to the rim, yep. they're generally they're not as good. You want your knights and your bishops in the center of the board as much as possible. Okay. So if you have two normal normal options you want to go towards the center instead, instead of towards the side of the board okay, that, that felt an, like an aggressive move <laughs> so would it make sense to move my queen under that bishop it's fine or but then he's gonna take my knight so should i move my knight out of the way but do do the count so like if you, if you move your queen your knight is defended still right so it's not a bad move the, the main thing is, since you're so new, is like trying to understand to develop your pieces, but then not making blunders where you give up like a knight or a queen or something and you get nothing in return. When okay, because you... if he takes that knight, then my other knight will take his bishop. Correct. Okay. So he has to decide whether it's worth giving up that bishop. Right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I was, I'm, I was almost nervous to move my queen out because I know she's so powerful. I'm like, do I want to save it? Okay, so here... He's threatening my knight. Is it better to leave my pawn where it is? Because my my two, So so two... normally when you see how you have your king and you have the three pawns in front of it, mm -hmm. what you want to do is you almost never want to push the pawn in front of your king. Right. So if you're gonna push a pawn here, it'd be best to push the pawn um, to the to the right of your king, up one square. Is it better to leave it? Because if he takes the knight, then my pawn takes his bishop. But, or, but, then, but that leaves my king exposed. So, okay, play the play the move. Play, play, play h3, push the pawn up one. Okay. Yeah. And so what happens if black takes your knight, you can recapture with your knight. Oh, he moved away. I don't know how I feel about this. You're, 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 you're quite far ahead. You're still up one pawn. So should, now... should my queen take... Oh, no, no, no. Obviously not. That was almost really dumb <laughs> because then his knight would take my, my queen. Right, okay. right. Super so, dumb. So now what you want to do is you want want to try to um, develop your last piece, like bring the pieces. How many pieces are still in their original square? The rook and four pawns. Right. So so when I say pieces, like pawns, normally pieces okay, mean like the bishops, the knights, the queen, and the rook, because those are the forces okay. that are most important. What the pawns do is they sort of create the space. You take more territory, and then you're then like the bishops, the knights, and the rook come in behind the pawns. Okay. But you use the pawns to take more more territory and more space on the board. So just the rook then. Yes. So should I move him right? Because I can, can you, you can move only through? move the rook right. Yeah, yeah you can't there, move there, through, right? There's a pawn right? in front. If there was no pawn, you could move up. But because there's a pawn in the way, you can't move up the board. How far right should I move him? However far right you want want to go. <laughs> I'm gonna move him here because sure. then that also defends mm -hmm. my knight more. Yeah, it's a good move. Thank you. Wow, that's a big compliment. I feel like every time you say that, that's like a bit a good move. I'm like really hyped up about it. I, I think the thing is again again. 
if, if, if I were, if this was, say, a Grandmaster level game, I would have different set of set of opinions. Right, But one of thing course. that's important is, like, is, is really understanding the level of the people when you're trying to help them, especially, like, yep. with this PogChamps tournament. It's trying to understand what the level is and what they're real, what you're really hoping for or expecting. Because there are certain types of moves, yeah, this is fine, too. There are certain types of moves that, like, you just can't be expecting players to play at that level. Right. So you want them to understand it as best they can and sort of some of these techniques to implement them. Um, I'm not sure what to do here because he's not threatening me. I feel like most of the time I've been on the defense. So now you 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 want to sort of try to um play more more aggro? Yeah, a little bit more. What would I move away? What what do I leave near my king? What do I move away? So so when you see these pawns in front of your king, these three pawns, like mm -hmm. you have the pawn in front of the rook, the pawn in front of the king, and the pawn up one square, that's the ideal formation um, for protecting your king. Okay, so can I move this knight up here? Is that you could do that? Sure. I'm going aggressive. But you'll notice, this is why I said the bishops are underrated, because you'll notice by moving your knight there, your opponent's bishop can capture your rook. Right. So if I... So now you should obviously recapture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is stressful, it's... but really fun. <laughs> I'm like... I can't. I think my play style right now is super like I want to react to him. Right. Which, which, or is, her. which is actually when you're just starting out that that is the best. Like I said, you just want to make sure that you're you're reacting. You're not giving up material. You're not blundering bishops or knights or any, any of your pieces uh, for free where you get nothing in return. That's that's the first step. Okay, so he moved his queen mm -hmm. there, which threatens just my pawn. There's nothing under attack here. So, so try to um, bring your knight to a better square. The, the knight, knight in front of the rook. This knight? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was right. Maybe the hero would have been better. Uh, they're, they're, bo they're both fine. A again, like, I think you were saying something about League. You were saying about how, like, with League, there are certain strategies, certain... Right. Um, certain strategies that you like that a pro will, will will have a different opinion of or they'll tell you what you can or cannot do and again it's the same sort of thing there's certain moves that if if i was playing the game i would say like this move is better but it's very advanced and so mm -hmm. generally it's more about the concept so like here um do you know what a fork is like in real life <laughs> no, I, I, I. I've used it. I've, used, I've used one once or twice. I think sounds familiar. Okay, okay so I'm, I push the pawn um, next to your queen up one square. I was oh, thinking about doing that. That wasn't the right one. Oh, this one. Okay. Well, <laughs> I was. Okay. I was thinking about a pawn. Okay. So now, what what I'm going to suggest you play is you push your pawn up one square. No, this no, one. no, 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 no. That one, yes. <laughs> Because now if, you, if your opponent captures your knight, you'll take the queen. Okay. And so if you give up one knight, but you get a queen in return, that's three for nine. And the queen is the most powerful piece by by far. Right. So your opponent's probably going to, they're going to move their queen here. And then you're going to be able to move your knight up to that square right up. Yeah. So actually your opponent allows you to move your knight up to this light square F7. F7. The, okay. Yeah. And you'll notice what happens is this is what's called a fork, where the knight is attacking three things at the same time. Queen, rook. Rook. And, oh, rook. Yeah, queen, rook, So rook. no matter which piece your opponent moves, you're going to be able to capture one of them. Probably a rook, because he's not going to want to give up his queen, right? Correct. But there's no way to avoid losing, um, losing material, losing a rook or a queen that is worth more than your knight. Yeah. So it's, it's fantastic. Okay, so what's what do I do here? Cause I would take a rook. Take a rook. Which which one? The one closer to the king? They're both fine. Norm normally, what I would say is you take the rook on the edge, though. Take the rook okay. in the corner because now your opponent has to take the rook out of the corner, out of the center, or out of the center so of the board, still and go to the edge. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now, do I address this queen? I would just. Well, it's it's hard to give you a good move here. Okay. So I would just make a move. Um. Yeah, play like maybe move your queen up to this light square, b5. b5, okay. So, so, sure. Kay. Okay, so, so, so here. Fast um, pace now. Yeah, so basically what, you, what you're going to want to do is you're, you're going to try to try to make a queen with this pawn um, on this light square. You see how this pawn is two squares from, from the end of the board? Which pawn? I can't see your screen. The pawn on, um, on the light square, e6. E6. Yeah, so when pawns go from one end of the board to the other end of the board, you can make a queen. Okay. So so what, what you what, what you want to do is see if you can get this pawn to the end of the board and, okay. um, and end the game. Okay. 
Because, or actually, no. So move the queen over two squares, so this light square. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And so what you're, you're going to try to do is um, move your move your queen up two squares to attack the king, and then you're going to use the queen to escort the pawn to the end of the board. Okay. If you can. Okay. If your opponent is really gotcha. good, they will see this idea. But normally this this is so move the queen up two squares. Gotcha, because if you did it three squares, the rook would take right. her. Right, so now, and now you can push the pawn forward. Okay. And when the pawn gets to the end of the board, it becomes something more powerful. Okay. So you, instead of being a pawn, you can make it a queen, or make it a That's rook, crazy. or make it a knight, or make it a bishop, whatever it's, you want. You can have two queens. Yes, yeah, so you could have uh, eight queens. Okay, I won by timeout. Right. So exciting! Okay, so I would have moved the pawn. It would have become a, a queen. You would make it a queen, because a queen is the most powerful piece, and your opponent has to give up the rook for the pawn and then you yep. capture the rook so you're you're even further ahead okay of material so Crazy. there's no checkmate but it still is, is winning awesome all right we're gonna be right back we're gonna be playing some geoguessr but then we're gonna be playing 5d chess well hikaru is not me obviously because you just watched that happen see you in a second hey we are back we just did a teach a noob Bit little thing with uh, Grandmaster Hikaru where he walked me through a game and I won. Mm -hmm. Not by checkmate, by timeout, but. It's still a win. I think we would have won though. And yeah, I say we yeah. because you were heavily a part of that. I don't know, you might have you might have won that though on your own. It is possible. I don't know, was I, okay, to be totally brutally honest, was mm -hmm. I better or worse than you expected that I would be? I would say definitely better than I expected. <laughs> Because you were not blunt, you, you knew how to develop the piece. You knew to move the piece okay. off the original squares, and intuitively, where you were moving the piece for the most part, it was the right squares. So you ha your intuition okay. was very good, and that that's the main thing. Is for someone who's just starting out, you can kind of tell if they have mm -hmm. a natural feel for these for the game for a game like chess or not. Right. I know from like doing some coaching lessons on Twitch, there there are certain people where you can just tell that it's just not clicking in that way and it's going to take a lot of work and other people where they just sort of have a natural feel for where where the pieces belong on, on the squares and i, I would yeah. say that was that, that was better than i expected because usually when people say nice. they, they played a little bit when they were young that means yeah. they might know how the pieces move but knowing where to where to move the pieces on the board for the most part you were you're pretty good at that awesome thank you i mean i love puzzle games so maybe that helps i do Makes like sense. sudoku and stuff every single night before i go to bed so we're gonna play what, evil or harder than that oh what's evil is it, I just play like, on Expert like, on the app that hard, I have. There's hard, and then there's like evil, and then there's even beyond that. Oh, yeah, I do Expert on the little Sudoku app that I have. Um, so we're playing okay. GeoGuessr right now. We're playing technically against each other, but uh, basically Hikaru and I have both traveled a lot, and we're going to see if that helps us at all with guessing where we are in the world. This is... Okay, this is... I, it's definitely Spanish, because I found this little oh, yeah. bus station, Zamorana... Pa I see para Paradoro Gaucho, so definitely Spanish. I see La Paulina. That doesn't really say much. Tacanitas. I don't know much about um, like dialects in Spanish. Like I wouldn't be able to tell just from signs. I don't. I don't know if other people would be about like whether it's South American, whether it's Mexican, or whether it's Spain Spanish. It's definitely not Spain Spanish though. So okay. Spain Spanish. Wouldn't the geography be more? I feel like you'd see like olive trees and, and more like, I don't know, more fields. Well, I don't know, it's big. Oh, Could this be. place is called Tacanitas. Right, that's what I, I, I saw that. I mean, I think I it's, it's Mexico, but I really don't have a strong. Uh, Let me see if I can see. The problem is without road signs, you really We're get getting, stuck. so some people in chat are saying Argentina, we have a, a Mexico. Um, as well, someone said China. I don't. Uh, I don't. It's not China. <laughs> somehow I'm gonna. Ooh, I blacked out. Somehow I think that's not accurate. But you do you. You know. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I don't even know where this is. But you get so signs. if you haven't played GeoGuessr for those of you watching. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of signage here. I feel like signage is the most helpful. For those of you watching, uh, you do get points for proximity, so you don't have to get it exactly to still end up winning. We're getting Mexico and, and Argentina are the two biggest ones. Yeah, I don't know much about Argentina. I've only been to Buenos Aires, so I haven't been outside as the well. country. Yes, me as well. That's that's what's hard um, sometimes. All right, okay. let's let's just make a guess. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's Mexico somewhere. I don't know. Where. I'm gonna go chat. I'm, I'm depending on you, but I'm gonna go high Argentina. So maybe I don't lose all the points if it's Mexico. 
Yeah, chat. Nice. Let's go, guys. I give you full credit. It's not me at all. I was, I was gonna think South America, but I would not have known Argentina specifically. Anyone here from Argentina? Let's see. Play next round. All right. Where are we now? I see a taco, tacos. Oh, somewhere else Spanish again. This is all Spanish. This, but it, yeah. I mean, you could get a Spanish taco truck in California, but no, this is also in Spanish, this building. Salon del Reno. Testigos de Jehovah. Okay, so. Let's see. This this is probably Sorry, in Mexico. I'm leaning, I'm leaning in so hard to the, a lot of palm <laughs> trees. So yeah, I feel like Mexico has a lot of palm trees, right? Well, I, like also, in, just in saw, I also just saw some English Carnitas. on a sign. Oh, okay, that might help. Great food. Uh, I miss Mexico. This must be Mexico. Whereabouts have you been in Mexico? So I've been to Mexico City, Guadalajara, and Monterrey. Oh, nice, nice. I've been to like Mexico City, Cuernavaca, outside the city, and then, um, or, okay. And I'm just going central. That's like my thing. I think it's close to the border, because there's, there's, there's Ooh. English. Ooh, La Paz. Maybe that's because that's on the ocean. Maybe they get more um, like vacationers okay. that come visit. Because okay, it's on the water, close. which yeah. would explain some more English. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's... Oh, I sometimes you end up just on these roads in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to assume this is the U.S. It looks like farmy American. No Jake brake? What does that mean? No well, one... there's a speed limit of 55. No Jake... Yeah. yeah, no Jake brake. It's <laughs> Jake. What's Jake? What's no Jake brake? So that must... Maybe that's like a local thing. I see Milburn... I, w I always think these are like upstate New York um, or it says welcome I to Milburn. Welcome to Milburn, USA. Where's Milburn? Anybody from Milburn? <laughs> Feed us. Someone said this is Belgium, but it definitely says Milburn, USA. And it has like green street signs. I wish you could see. Um, Milburn. I'm going to go with like upstate New York. Milburn sounds like upstate New York-y. Mm. I'm well, gonna go with tri-state, like Pennsylvania. -y. Yeah, I think I think that's a pretty good guess. Let's try it out here. Ew. Nope. I was waiting for you to guess, but I was reacting. No. <laughs> Dang, Oklahoma. Wow. Dang. Wouldn't have known. Wouldn't have known it. All right. Let's see this one. This one also. Oh, it could be Europe. Could be Europe with the mountains. Could be Europe. Could be. Um. Could be the U.S. I th no, this is Scandinavia. I'm almost certain. Okay. It's got to be Scandinavia. What about like sw bordering Switzerland? Anywhere? I think. I mean, don't 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 necessarily trust me. I could be saying that and they guess something else. But I'm I'm not doing that. But I I mean I could be. If oh I was being dang! Really yeah. Hey, my my yeah, computer's. I mean, like, a, I'm the on the back monitor. <laughs> Play the psychology game. I see a lot of like. There's a lot of red. The only thing that makes me still feel like it's U.S. It's is just be all US. the red. I feel like the red little farmhousey. Yeah, there was just one farmhouse that looked very Scandinavian to me. But yeah, all these trees. But a lot of there's a lot of Sweden, Norway, Finland in the chat. A lot of it. Everyone's saying it's Magnus's house. <laughs> is he? Where, where is he he's, from? He's from uh, from Norway. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That would be hysterical. What if we accidentally just scooted past his house on this? This I think this is Scandinavia. Though. I'm I'm pretty confident in that. I'm. I'm trusting chat with Norway. Let's go. Okay. I've never yeah. been. I was supposed to go. Oh, Sweden. I didn't guess, but I was oh, okay. actually about to guess Sweden. So. Okay, I, I trust I, I saw, you. I saw a Swedish I trust flag. You. Well, there's a Swedish flag if you look closely. I, oh, I don't know dang, where I'm I missed guessing, that. but whatever. I missed that. Yeah, I was just about to guess. Dang. I know I'm wrong, but. No, you're good. You're good. Eh. Yeah. We... Close okay. enough. Oh, we we're actually like this kind of equal distance. last one. Oh, okay. This could be. This could be a lot. Um, hmm. Hmm. This is tough. Oh, okay. I see some ducks. Ah. Uh, shoot. There's like no signs. I don't know if you found one yet. I have not found a sign yet. There, I've seen like no lettering. Okay. There's like. I have oh, no is idea. Is there something on there? Says. Nope. Just copyright of Google. Sorry. I'm like squinting in chat's face so hard. Chat, <laughs> help me out. Everyone said this is their house. Okay, well, you know what? 
Y'all are trolling. Y'all are trolling. I have no idea where this is. But this, this is like South America. It's like... It could be South America, but it could also be like Southeast Asia. Like, it could be Trippy. anywhere. That's like... Southeast Asia, what is really? This? I don't think... I don't okay, think maybe so. not. Wait, uh... Mm, this... This looks... Okay, well, uh, okay, I'm going to just guess something random. I literally have no idea. Uh, guess. Let's see, where is that? Uh, I'm going... I'm going... I'm full sending. Full sending... Oh, dang. You know what? I was literally going to guess Russia because I saw one symbol that I was like, maybe that was Russian. And <laughs> dang. Did you guess? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got more points, dang. but I think you won because of the first one. Dang. All right. So if you What'd are you looking get? forward, uh, I got 50 points from that. Oh, have you summary? Oh, you lost then. Yeah. I, I got 10, 9, 9, 4 total. No, no, you, no. Then you won. You won. Okay. Yeah. You won because of the first one, Argentina, because you got like 4K and I got like Great success, Nothing. chat. Thank you. It's all chat's win. We'll be right back, and Hikaru is going to play some 5D chess, and we're all so excited to see it. See you guys in just a second. Hey, welcome back. We just played GeoGuessr, and uh, not so shockingly, I won because I totally cheated by having chat help me. <laughs> totally cheated, 100%. Uh, yeah, because, you know, you're playing on my home field, so mm -hmm. my, I get the home field advantage, and that's just pure cheats, pure cheats. <laughs> no, no shame whatsoever. But I know a lot of you, if you're fans of Hikaru, if you watch his stream, that you have been waiting for him to play 5D chess, and today is that day. He's going to be playing for the first time ever. So you don't, how, how much do you actually know about the game? Um, I think I kind of understand the rules, not okay. not completely. Um, so I, I have some general grasp of, of the rules, but I don't understand how all the pieces move. Um, okay. And it's yeah, and we'll we'll see how it goes. Before you get in, um, I just have a I have a couple questions because I'm like I said, I'm new to like professional chess. I'm new to that world. So you said your matches are timed. So when you're playing a game against Magnus, how long can those god tier matches actually last? Is it finite? Um, so there, there are varying controls. There's uh, what we have, which is called classical chess, where you play okay. one game a day. And those those games, players have about two and a half to three hours for the whole game. Okay, so wow. those games can go like six to seven hours a day and up to two weeks long, because usually it's like nine individual games or more. Wow. So that's uh, those are the rank terms that count towards the world rankings officially for the slow chess. Um, there also are what we call rapid games of chess, where you have maybe 15 to 20 minutes for the whole game. So an individual game will go 30 to 40 minutes. And then there's, blitz, there's blitz chess where you have five minutes or less for the whole game, and those go a maximum of ten minutes. Whoa. Okay. So that's kind of what we were just doing was technically blitz, except we totally, we we were we were scripting a little bit because he was teaching. Right. Um, that's crazy. So I feel like, and like, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like winning against Magnus today was a really big deal for you, not just because obviously he's the world champion, but also all Magnus does is chess all day, every day seven days a week, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. All he does is chess. You're streaming, you're just moved, you're like playing Fall Guys, you're here with me. Isn't, does that do anything for you mentally? Does that like hype you up? The fact that you beat someone who literally lives, eats, sleeps and breathes chess and you're able to juggle so many other things and also just be God tier at chess? Um, I mean, I, I guess what I would say is I'm also studying chess as well, but more than that, yeah. what I've found is, I mean, I've spent a lot of my life playing chess as well and yeah. Um, I find that having all the fans sort of supporting me makes it makes it really really special for me. So I'm I, I think that's actually having that motivation as well. Yeah. Um, that's so nice. And you're so you're a grandmaster. How many titles are there? Uh, there there are three official titles. Okay. Or four, I should say. There's the, what we call national master, the master rank, where, which you get at 2,200. There is um, FIDE Master, which is about 2,300 ranking points. There's okay. International Master at 2,400 points, and then Grand Master at 2,500 points. Wow. Um, and the top players in the world are um, about 2,800 points or a little above that. Wow. So they're also Grand Masters, just more points, I guess? Yeah, they have a higher ELO ranking, yes. Okay. And, oh, what was I just going to ask? I was going to ask you something. Oh, yeah. How many Grand Masters are there? Like... There are probably about 1,500 grandmasters in the world, and the thing that's really special about the titles when you become a grandmaster, um, you have that forever. So okay. even even if you're playing many years down the road and say your ranking goes down lower, um, you still uh, you still you still keep that title. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So we're going to get you into a match of 5D chess. We are totally learning how to actually start this up. Yeah, it's it's such a new game. I think we're um, waiting for somebody to. Yeah, I think join I think us? we're waiting for someone to click to to play play pl click play match and the. We could match, also yeah. play a CPU match since you've never played the game. Let's do okay. that. Sure. That way we don't have okay. to deal with uh, we don't know. Yeah. Ooh, aggressive right away. Okay, we like this. Okay. So I guess part of the basic premise of this game is that there's multiple chessboards. So 5D is and there's like a time travel element to it, and it's uh super above my. Level. So I, I think the first thing is that y you start playing normal chess. So, oh like I'm gonna move my knight out here because this is this is just like a normal game. Okay. And by the way, one thing that also is, is really amazing about chess is there are some of these opening strategies um, in the game of chess which have been around for 500 or 600 years since yeah. the modern rules were established. So there 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 are many opening strategies, but some of them have been around for literally forever. So, oh, yes. is mm -hmm. the beginning of a game for you the usually the part that moves the the quickest because you know there's certain things that you just do? Yeah. So the first like five to ten moves of the game, generally you just play. Um, you you just sort of have your opening strategy and you just do okay. it every time mostly. Sometimes you play something else. Um, right. Okay. Now, how do I go to another dimension? Is the question. I here. think you had it before where they started like yeah. doing that. There's, we're on history view, parallel view. You can see in the in the side. Oh yeah, right. see, wow. This but is, it's still just a regular game. It looks like. I think you can somehow steal pieces or something from one match to another. So okay, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go here. This is crazy though. So you can see. So basically, everything behind you is each instance of the game thus far. Right, so if you go all the way back, you'll see the first move. Um, now, I, th I think it's both players has an option to go into another dimension, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, but right now, my opponent, the computer is not doing that. I'm a little confused why. I'm not sure. Maybe it's at some. Oh wait, now is there the option? Once you ma make it, once you make a move before you submit it. Yeah. See, so now it's white. The arrows are lighting up differently. Can you move or no? Can you move down? Let's see. Um. You can undo moves, okay. The present, the present. So it's still present. So strange. Maybe that's just showing you what timeline you're on at the moment. Well, because right now this is just normal chess, so I would win this game every time, but let's see. <laughs> let's see. Maybe I did something wrong with the settings. I don't know, we can try, we can reset the game. Yeah, I think I think we should reset this, because this is just a normal let's game. Let's do it. Okay, let's let's just forfeit aggressive. Okay, random, aggressive. Yeah. Okay, let's try this. I'm doing a, a quick Google's. Sure. Google's. Okay. How to 5D chess. Wait, ah. what? 5D chess. Submit moves. What happens when you put on parallel view or history view on the right corner? Right, so I think parallel view gives you sort of the history when you're you're trying to go down or, or go mm -hmm. into another dimension. Um, like right now. So let's see. This says, let's imagine a 2D chessboard. In 2D chess, you ha only have, as you might expect, to be able to move along the X and Y axis. Now let's imagine a piece like a rook. Okay, open up. Let's imagine a piece like a rook. The rook can either move horizontally or vertically, any number of spaces. Um, the bishop, on the other hand, moves diagonally, blah, yada, yada, yada. So, it's just, it's basically using time as another spatial dimension. That is to say, traveling forwards or backwards through time is equivalent to traveling along a Z. So now if you take the rook again, which can be along either X or Y, the rook can also optionally travel along Z dimension into the past into the past or future, but not in addition to another dimension. So I think that you can move a piece from your current board or from a past board to that exact space on a future or past board, if that makes sense. Kind of. <laughs> like you can't move it up for your rook. You can't move it up or vertically or horizontally, but you can move it through the boards essentially. So when you did that, that, that view where they were all stacked up, you can kind of move that that rook through the boards, but it has to go back to that exact spot. I think. Maybe try moving, seeing if you could 
flip it. Let's see. Okay, I don't think I have that. Chad, option. has anyone played this game? Time travel, two kings in one board. Monka W. Okay, <laughs> my brain right now. Forehead. My brain. I know exploded. the first five moves are supposed to be the same. That much I know. Okay. Um, but beyond that. So once you get past that, let's see what happens. So is this? Okay, now here we go. Okay, oh. so so now it moved the knight from this square over to like i think when you go into the other dimension the knight doesn't move like it does normally it goes instead of doing the l it does like a two over two up or two down i think i think it's a okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go with you i'm gonna go with you i'm gonna assume that whatever you say is correct okay so now what happens with the so i guess you can expand up to five but dimensions I, I, have to, I have to play yeah and i have to play on the second board i have to make moves on both boards so now he has three rooks in. Oh, well, I guess you. I mean, three knights. Three but knights, you, you but captured I captured one. one. Um, I guess I captured. He here. doesn't seem like he's very good for an aggressive bot. <laughs> well, I think this is such a new game that it's not. Um, it's not that easy. Also, the but thing also I, maybe you're just very, very, very good. I, I would also say the thing is like one of the reasons like computers really were able to solve chess or become better than humans at chess, unlike a lot of other games many, many years ago, like in the late '90s, is yeah. because it's finite in terms of the possibilities. And so one thing okay. is like. When you look at a game like Go, for example, it took a lot longer because of how big the board is combined with the number of possibilities. Yep. So when you take chess, which is finite in terms of the possible moves on any given get any given any given turn, um, and then you start multiplying that by the number of boards, I think yeah, uh, it's not as easy for someone to program that. Okay. So let's see. I, wait, no. Okay, I'm gonna go. Do oh, I wanna, so you do can. I want to move this up here. Yeah, I can move my knight Whoa. to this board, but I, I don't want to do that. Um, can you double king, or is that probably not a thing? No, you can do that. You can move a king from one board to an... Okay, Does that what? make you lose on that other board? No, I think the game just goes hot on the other board. Okay. And then it's like you need to put the king in check in a previous turn on the okay. other board for the game to be over. Like, if you don't get the checkmate on an individual board, I think you need to be able to threaten to capture the king yep. on a board in the past. Something like that. Whoa. This game is very... Okay, let me see. Intense for my small pea brain. We are learning. Click, Click the piece you want to move and then move it to a past board. Clap yeah, key is here. right. Exactly. Yeah. And then we have a lot of way too danks, way too danks, way too danks. Yeah. My brain. I know, my brain too. Uh, uh -oh, uh -oh, Rubik's uh -oh, Cuban uh -oh, yesterday. Uh -oh. This is this is getting bad. Oh, are you in trouble? No, I don't think I'm in trouble, but there are too many boards. I think we're playing three boards now or something. Like I, I think it can get up to five. That might be where it's more they call it 5D, but I don't know also. Hopefully B it's Big brain? Big wait, brain? What, 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 what? Five head? What? But now the bishop just... Okay. Hey, chat wants to know... Uh, actually, no, chat, I want to know from you. Wait, how mind-blown are you about wait, 5D what? chess right now? What give me a one to five on a scale. Type, give me a one, two, three, four, or five wait, in chat. It, now there are two or kings Vendor on TV. this board. What? He has two kings. So do you have to capture both to win on that board? I think you just need to put the king in check on a previous board somehow, but like, I don't really know. <laughs> I have no idea. very large brained. And then down here, I have to make a move, I guess. <laughs> 999, some people are saying. Give me a one through five. We can't pull those numbers. One through five only. All oh, right, and then down here. If you give me seven, 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 I can't pull it. Can't pull it. Can't pull it for the poll. Yeah, this is really random. Oh, did I check me? 1,042. No, I, I like Wait, that you no, spelled no, it what, out. Okay, what? What? <laughs> you can okay. vote at Venn.tv. Um, you can also slash play, I guess, they're putting in chat. But you can also just type 1 through 5 in chat. But type other numbers. It's not going to go in. There's only so many options. It's like chess. We're finite here. 1 through 5. Okay, I think this is checkmate on this board, maybe. Already? It's been like two seconds. I think I got checkmate on one of these boards. Um... Yeah, this is very weird. No, but maybe it's not checkmate because I think the king can move to the other board if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so how do you ever win if the king can just keep moving from board to board? Because He's like, all right, peace. I think you can put a king. Do you have to trap him on every single board? Um, Maybe. Have you time traveled your pieces? I have. N yeah, I moved one of my knights to another square. Do you have to move? Do they have to go to the exact square that they were on on one board? or you No. Can Oh, yeah, I checkmated him, right? Because I checkmated the king in the past. 
Yeah, you win. Game ended. Why? Because I checkmated the king on, on. So like, you see, you see this bottom set, these bottom three boards. Yeah. You see how the king is in check here on this yes. one. Yes. Yes. Because the king was in check there in the past, I won the game. Whoa! Wait. So you went to the past and won the game. I think. So. Yeah. I guess. You big brained yourself. <laughs> Something you're like, like that. You're like maybe. I don't know. I just know I won. I, I know I won. That's all that I. That matters, you just I won. Guess. You just easily <laughs> won your first game of 5D chess, not officially knowing the rules. Just like we're like, yeah, let me just like click around a bunch and oh, look, checkmate. But I know there there are humans who who would be much better at this than I am. Maybe today because they've read the rules, but tomorrow after you read them, maybe not anymore. Nice. Maybe. Well, that was good. Uh, do you think you're going to be streaming more 5D chess now? If after I you can actually it? understand the rules, yeah. yes. If I can actually understand the rules. Okay, I love it. People are saying in chat like it's interstellar time travel. Did you ever see that movie? Uh, interstellar? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I try, I tried, I've tried to read books on physics, but I don't really understand it well enough. So I tried I really hard after Interstellar. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I tried reading a brief, what's it, a brief, brief, uh, or a brief moment in time, a brief history of time, the, the Stephen Hawking book. I read yeah. some of it, mm -hmm. and it's just like it's impossible. It's big brain. Yeah. Too much. Stephen Hawking's like maybe a six brain, six head, mm -hmm. no six yeah. brain. My brain is mush after all this. All right, we will be right back. Thank you guys for hanging out. We're gonna be right back with more Hikaru. Go read the rules of 5D chess and then tell it to us later. You thought that this morning's matchup was tough when Magnus and Hikaru faced off and Hikaru one, thankfully, he was powered by his hype for Guest House, of course. But it's nothing compared to what he's about to face right here in the Guest House. Yours truly, chess noob, but now expert because Hikaru taught me all of his skills before I learned all of his tricks. During the commercial break, he told <laughs> right. me all the secrets. Um, yeah, we're going to face off, but I think I think the odds are going to be stacked a little bit for me. Hopefully. Well, okay. What just happened? Oh. So. Are we already on a board? Yes, we are. Oh, shoot. Okay. I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm into it. So first things first is this is a random setup of a position. This is not just okay. like a, a normal kind of setup. Um, I'm already stressed. So you'll notice like I have all these, all the pieces like on one side of the board, but my king is on the other side of the board. So generally like in or the king is the most important piece in a way because it's the piece that you have to defend. Right. Um, the, however, there is one thing I did tell you which is you want to look and see what your opponent is attacking, attacking so you can react oh, to a certain yeah. degree. And like, yes. you already blundered a bishop for um because, for one pawn. You know why I wasn't going to do that is because I was like, oh, if I attack it, then you, you attack, you can just attack it with the other one. Well, you could have moved it away, one. though. You could have moved it away. Right. If you had captured the pawn, you would have gotten two pawns in return for a bishop or a knight, which is uh, still three is less than, than two. Okay. Yeah, two you're is right. less than three. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I'm also trying to move, like, not at a snail's pace. Well, you don't but... want to, because here you have 10 minutes. Like, this yeah. is one thing is um, sometimes people will actually play chess games for money. Yeah. Um, and so when that happens, you the way that you sort of balance it out is you give what are called time odds. So somebody has much more time than the other player. And um, and so when, when you're moving, like, instantly, um, the, the player who's stronger will sort of be able to anticipate that, and they can react, and the player who's weaker will make more mistakes. So, like, in this case, you're... you're trying to move pieces with, with kind of wander wanderlessly there's no aim behind your moves right Ooh, well, there's, well you moved your knight like there's there's four in the back there's aim but just bad aim there's some aim so so what you would want to do here is kind of try to attack my king if there's some way to kind of um open up the the position towards where my king is because the king is the piece that's most vulnerable and it's the, the objective is to checkmate the king right Okay, that's a good move. I have a strategy here. Yes, that's a much better move. There is a strategy behind that move, okay. unlike your previous two moves. Shh. There's a strategy. Okay, I don't want to do that because then you'll take my queen. Right. Um, the bishop is guarded by my queen. But I need to get my queen out of the way. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Because I don't want you to get my queen. Right. If I take this, then you can take that. That might be worth it because then I can take yours. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. She's learning! Um, if I take this, I don't think that's worth it because then I don't get anything in return if you take mine. But also, I don't know if I, I can't really get this out of the way. Um, <laughs> so, so remember so one thing I, I said, yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is it hot in here? I'm sweating. 
I'm getting nervous. You're getting you're getting closer to the the king. So. Yeah, you'll see that like my king is very safe. You're not really attacking my king. Yeah. Whereas your king, I have a rook that's very close to your king. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I can do about that, but uh, it's not coming to me yet. It's not coming to me. The voices in my head are not speaking. Um. Uh. I just. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Don't ask me why. It's not. It's not a bad move. Okay. That's good too. Very good. Do you prefer um, e chess or physical chess? Um, I mean, I kind of like online chess more just because it's easier. You can just be at home playing as opposed to um, as opposed to having <gasps> to travel a lot. So I I, I I like playing online more. Also, I like quicker games generally for the most part as well. Um, what was not mentioned is that I am the number one ranked player in the world at Blitz Chess. So when when you play with five minutes or less for the whole game. I am the number one ranked player in the world. So generally, my intuition is is um, is is pretty good. So I, I like the quick chess more. And online, it is quick chess because slow chess, it just people won't people don't play slow chess on, on the internet. I am so stressed out right now. I only have twelve seconds though. Uh, uh oh, I didn't realize that they slowed you. Um. No, no, no. I mean that the, there have to be odds because otherwise I'm gonna win every time. I know, I know, I know. Uh, I just don't know what to do about your rook. That rook there, it's its making me uncomfortable. Is that a bad idea? Yep, that's a terrible idea. You totally let me... Wait, why did you let me do that? You let me do that. Yeah, the only problem is this checkmate. Dang! So, what? Uh, what? So if you, if you oh look at your God. king, yeah, so I know. your king can't move anywhere. I know, I know. All I was thinking is like, wow, the queen, wow. Oh. So that's one thing that makes chess very hard also oh is that... Oh, my God. Is that, like, you can give away the pieces that are more if you can checkmate the king. So even though, like, there's a piece value assigned to all the various pieces... Ah, you're so... We're in it. We're in so it. So right now you'll see you're up. Uh, you're up by a lot of lot of material. You have um, you have two extra bishops and two extra knights. Oh yeah, they're really so you're, dangling you're here. Well. Yeah, you're still gonna lose, but. Um, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's, oh wait, okay. Thank you no. for that. Yeah, That's, I know, I know, the, I know. Thank you for the generosity. I know. I That's was one like of in the my four pieces that you had. I know, I know. Just you know, let's not talk about it. How do I? Tape the castle. You can't. You can't do that. Actually, have the queen in the way, but it, it also would be a, an illegal move because I have my queen preventing you from doing that. How? So if you look at my queen. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. You, you only. I only showed you how to castle the king one way. You could also try to go over the other way two squares. You see how you your queen. Mm -hmm. You see where you're. Okay. Well, you can make a move too. You have time though. See, this is the thing. Like, since you played that first game, now you want to move really, really quickly. And you're you're just gonna make blunders because since you're so new to the game, sort of the pattern recognition, the strategies, you don't yeah. you don't have a firm grasp on them. So like when you move quickly, the intuition's not there, and you're just gonna make moves that blunder material. Okay. But this is yeah. Now there is one thing I said though. Remember how I said you want to develop your pieces and get your king out of the middle part of the board? Yeah, I've left him in there. Yeah, your king is kind of gonna become quite vulnerable here. So remember, think about the basics. Like I said, what can you capture? What's under attack? And what am I am I attacking any of your forces? You're attacking my pawn. Mm -hmm. This queen is attacking a pawn. Not really, though, because your bishop can capture the queen. Yeah. Okay. So just a pawn, really. Right. So would it be dumb to move my queen forward so I can Fine. slide my king? And then could I corner ca castle? Yeah, you would like to go over two here, but you can't do it because I'm attacking your king. If your king is under attack, you cannot castle. Also, oh. if you look at where my queen is, my queen covers the square that you want to put your king on so if i do this if i move my my king my queen here mm -hmm. if you then moved your rook i could capture your rook so is that a bad move well you're giving up a queen though that would be dumb okay so i should move my king over you one do that one there are there there are two options with your king where you i can could move, move your king. him here it's not terrible here it's not terrible. I'm just gonna say the same thing. There's no, those are the only two options <laughs> right, though with him. Right with, right with the king. So so yeah. Oh, I could do that. That's also a move. I could do that. It's also a move. Okay, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I am down on material here, so I don't I don't want to give you too much help. Okay. How do you manage stress while playing the game from at band loops? I need this advice right now. Yeah, I mean, I think what I would say. Um, 
Uh, in, in Can general, I castle now, by the way? You cannot, because my queen actually covers that square. You see how my queen, it, it covers that square on Gosh the light square? dang your queen. Yeah, I think with stress, the main thing is kind of... Um, Really, it's just just trying to stay in the moment and not have sort of thought, general thoughts about what's going on, like in the tournament or thoughts about life. I found is just trying to stay in the moment and um, and just focus on on the actual position because when you're playing professional chess, right, it is players are so good that if you make one mistake, you blink once, you're gonna lose the game. Okay. Um. So so because of that, uh, it's very stressful because you're feeling that pressure on every move to not make a mistake. Um. And, and in general, I think it's just trying to trying to trying to relax and trying to find. Okay, Try, trying to sort of just stay in the moment and not not think think about you know the moment of of you know what happens if I win this game or I lose this game and the the end result. It's just okay. It's not a bad move. <laughs> no, I mean it, it's good because you got my queen off the board. Now can I castle now? No, you once you've moved the king, you never can castle. Oh, okay, okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Now I'm in trouble. You were yeah. You could have taken my queen on the previous move. Oh yeah, I could have. I'm a dumb, dumb, dumb. But now can I again? Why is that bad? Yeah, you could. Okay, okay, okay. Big brains, big brains. Give me the big brains. Oh, but now you just get another queen. Right? Yeah, kind of. Okay. okay. Big brains. Um. But rem you don't always have to promote it to a queen. Right. Okay, but I'm in trouble. Did I lose? This isn't checkmate? This Isn't this checkmate? It is in one move. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, so there's something I can do here. I have no idea. Oh, wait. I'm so stupid. Okay. So... Wait, no. Okay. So there was nothing I could do? Was it still checkmate? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's Wait, do, I let's like see. this okay. mode. That you just have a king. Okay, I like this. I, I say that now, but I'm probably still going to lose. Uh, you can't lose. I feel like I can somehow. I only have one king. I, it's not enough to make a checkmate with one king. Um. Okay, game conditions for this one. He'll only has have you only have a king, but I have to mate him and not stalemate him. Right, because if the king has no squares to move to and you're not threatening to capture the king, then it's a draw. So I have to capture you. Basically threaten to capture my king where there are no squares to go to. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I've been preparing this my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is tough. Okay, um... This is not tough. I have no piece on the board. You, it's you, you tough! Actually, you it's should, you tough! You're you, a grandmaster! But I have only one king. Okay, just if you... Just... Uh, it's tough. There, there's like... There, there's it's no, tough. There's no, there's no attack coming. There, I have it's one tough. king. It's still tough. You're still somehow <laughs> going to win. Uh, no. It's, it's like... It's, it's impossible for me to win this game. I don't know. Um, wait, I don't know why I tried to move like that. Um, I am like sweating <laughs> profusely right now. This is so scary. Oh, you're okay. Okay, never mind. Um, no. Okay. If you move, you have to move it, right? And by king, yeah, I, yeah, I have to move my king. It's the only piece I have on the board. Oh no, you did it. Did I did it? You did not check me at the king. No. You did the wrong. So the reason because is, oh wait. So so look at the just click that X and look at the position. So no, you couldn't move anywhere. Yeah, and the king, you aren't gonna capture the king. So, so like for example, when I have captured you though, what's the, I don't understand because I can't move the king anywhere. What you what you need to do is you need to be threatening to capture the king. When you okay. move the rook here, the king, my move, I have no squares to go to. You have to move it on a square where you're going to capture the king when it can't move. Oh, so I else. needed to check you, not check me. So like, can you just hit the back arrow? Just I think that goes back one move. Just me? hit the back. Yeah. So if you move, just move the rook to the light square here. This one. Uh, down to C two. Down to C2. Yeah, right, right, right where the king is. Yeah. So you see when you move there. Yeah. I'll move my king up one square. So just move the king up one square. 
Oh, I, I, I can move it? Yeah. The, well, it's an, it's an analysis, but just move the king up one square. No, no, sorry. Uh, the other way to A3. Yeah. Okay. And so now move the queen on the back all the way over. Here? Yeah. And so you'll see this is checkmate because you see how you're going to capture the king next move, right? Because it's under attack. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, yeah. I, how is it not under attack the other time? Well, th this is che checkmate because what happens to the king is no squares and you're, you're attacking the king. The previous one, you were not attacking the king when oh, it had no squares. I wasn't attacking. Yeah, you weren't going to capture the king. I weren't, atta I wasn't attacking you. I was just cutting off any other. Right. You're, you're so taking away all the squares, but the okay. king was not under attack. Whereas here, the king has no squares and you're going to capture the king. So I was putting my pieces in a place where if you move there, I would be attacking, but I had to right. be already yeah, attacking you, were, you, you weren't going to be capturing the king yeah oh so crazy okay, oh, well, let's oh do it again, here then. we're here let's again see. okay now i understand i think i really wasn't totally with that concept honestly don't worry it's 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 quite common actually if you're really new to the game it's it's a common thing to to allow that okay so okay this is i gotta really think about this now this time i gotta make sure that i'm like Hmm. Uh huh. So I don't want to, as my queen, I guess, move within two. Well, I mean, uh, the general rules don't think about that right now. Just remember that in order to attack, to, to checkmate the king, you have to be threatening to capture it, but you have to be, you have to use two, two of your forces. It can't just be one lone queen or one lone bishop or one lone pawn. Okay. Wait, so I have to be attacking you with two? Well, I'm saying in order for me not to be able to capture your, capture the king. Okay. Or capture whichever piece you're, you're threatening to capture my king with. Okay. So you need to use two of your pieces together to protect each other and create the checkmate. Okay. Okay, I get that. That makes sense to me. Sort of. Okay. Now there is a checkmate here. <laughs> oh, no. oh no, okay, hold on. You have the right idea though of putting the king in check where you're always attacking the king. Okay. And that's one thing you want to try to do. Try to do that with every move you play where you're, you're, you're oh, trying to capture the king. Oh, if I move my queen here, is that checkmate? I don't know, you tell me. So if I move it here, then I'm attacking you. Right. And if you move to the left, I can capture you with my knight. Mm-hmm. But if you move diagonal back, I can capture you with my queen. And if you move diagonal forward, I can capture you with my pawn. Right. So that's checkmate? Yes, that is. <gasps> Yay! Yeah. I beat Hikaru and he only had one piece. That's still a victory, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, that's so still very, that's a big deal <laughs> to me. <laughs> No, no, that's great. It's great, though. And also, again, you totally like helped me. <laughs> no, but I, I think the thing is you picked up very quickly on it. That's what I was saying. Like, there's some of these, like, okay. basic patterns or these checkmates that, like, it, you're picking up on that very quickly. And you can kind of tell with people who play certain types of games, they pick up on these things a lot quicker than, than, than other people. So, in that case, it was checkmate because my queen was actively attacking your king. Right. And there are no squares for my king. Okay, but if I just do it in a situation where I set it up so no matter where you go, I'd be attacking, then that's just a stalemate. Correct, yes. Gotcha. Okay, did not did not know that. Thanks, chat. Thanks for hyping me <laughs> up. They're like, easy clap. Yeah, right. I'm drenched right now. That's, it's one king, but it's still a, a win is a yeah. win. That's crazy. Oh, my goodness. That's That's... Is there any, like... I guess, I guess, like, how do you prepare? Oh, I guess we're in again. How do you prepare? Like, is do you have different? Um, oh, you have all nights. I was like, hey, here's a full board. How do you prepare against certain? That was stupid. I was trying to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it's it's very very hard. Um, like there there's some amateur amateur player, some streamers who are like more amateur players, mm -hmm. and they've told me that they have trouble sort of playing and um playing and sort of chatting at the same time. So 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 it makes sense. Yeah, how do you manage that? That's a good question. Thank you for feeding me that. I think I've just I've played too much chess, so I just I naturally know how good I am at the game. Like that's okay. not, not really like flexing, but it's more like when you've just played so many games, there's you're used to all sort of different patterns and you know that you're gonna intuitively find find Yay. good squares to put the pieces on. I just really wanted to do that. Yeah, so the, there you castle the king the other way. You went to the other side, so it's always two squares to the left or two squares okay. to the right. I like that. But that, that's also good that you you understood that right away because most people they try to castle the king over one square further, like on the other side. 
They try, they try, they think the castle it should be on the same square as it is on the other side, but it's not. That was dumb. Yes. Well, this is hard because I have too I many. I have too the, many knights. The knights are very hard to just constantly think about all the ways that they could go. Since right. it's that, that so knights are very good at these forks where they attack two, two. They threaten to capture two pieces at the same time. Right. Jeebus, 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 jeebus. This is okay. So if I do this, then your rook captures. So my rook. I, don't I mean, have your, any pawn, rooks. your pawn. Your pawn. Your yeah. pawn. Your pawn. <laughs> your pawn captures. Um, but if I, yeah, if I do it with my queen, no, because then you would capture my queen. Right. Is there a time where you're just like, yeah, I'm just, I gotta eat that? Um, sometimes that, that does apply. Um, in this case, I, it's probably not the best idea, because one thing you want to do, and this is why knights are so tricky, is, um... Oh, what do you mean to do that? Oh, okay. that's fine. Well, but what, what you'll notice is, like, the, the thing is, this is why pawns are such great pieces, because they don't really influence the game in a way, but they also can push my knights back. Like, the pawns, which are worth a lot less than the knight, can sort of just keep attacking the knights and keep inching up the board so I don't have a lot of squares for my knights. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You're coming in close. Yeah, the, the, knight, the knights are coming. The knights are coming. Okay, so if I do this, I've... I've Okay. I feel like this is way too many pieces for you to have. Yeah, so so in general, what what you what a sh more experienced player would do is they would actually try to give up the material, like give up some rooks for, for a knight or oh for two knights because gosh. the queen the queen is so powerful relative to the knights. Yes. But in this case, um, yeah, it's it's just it's a tough tough spot to be in. Oh wait, I have no time. Oh my gosh, I was I wasn't looking at my time. Okay, I better focus. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, I only have eight seconds. Okay. So if you can survive for like another 50 moves, you'll be fine. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Mary and Joseph. I don't know. I don't know if I can keep surviving. Uh, oh, I can't move that anywhere. Okay. So I... Um, uh, oh my goodness. Oh, I don't want you to get that. There's nothing I can do though, right? Not really. Because um, if I move that rook, you'll, well, if I move that rook, you'll capture that rook. And then I really don't want to give up another piece. So, if I move here, you'll get that. Jeez. I feel like I lost already. I have 3.8 seconds. Oh, that was a slip. Whoops. Is that a good thing for me? Um. Oh, my. Oh, man. 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 Yeah. Ah! All right, let's checkmate. All right. Victory is yours. I left we myself in the corner. There. I had, point, I had point 0.4. Dang. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and then we have a few minutes left with Hikaru. If you have any questions that you did not ask or that I have not asked yet today, start spamming them in the chat. We'll ask him a couple questions before he has to leave us and get some rest to prep for his next match tomorrow. See you in just a second. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I guess you just saw me get brutalized by Hikaru, even when he had no pieces, even when he had all nights, even when all of the odds were stacked against him, he had no time, except once I sort of kind of fake won. One time. When close, you just close, when you just yeah. had a king. Yeah. That's pretty tough, though. But I think, honestly, without if we had just came in cold today without you have at, like coached me up at all earlier, I would have completely lost that as well. No, no, you wouldn't have, but you wouldn't have won either. So I it, would have been, it would have been in between. Stalemated. I could have accidentally thrown my king out there, though. It could have happened. True, true. It could have happened. True. Or just like... But, but on online, they don't let you... You, see, you... you play League, so like online, they don't let you in. So you can't, uh... you can't just like give it away. It won't let you make the illegal move and lose the game. Whoa, so that's, that's crazy. So that's, that's a plus side, at least. Dang, that's crazy. Do you have any... Um... 
Here's like a fun question. Do you have any like collectors chess boards like that you like love or are you just like, nah, whatever? Um, not really. Okay. Uh, I have one glass chess set that I won at a tournament, so That's it's cool. kind of nice, but yeah. it's way too big and way too impractical, so Oh, um, it's large. It's just sitting at my parents' house in, in, in New York. Um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from New Jersey. We were okay, just talking right, about this right, on the break. Right. East but... Coast, yeah. It's like chess yeah. on the East Coast is big. Like out here, there's almost no chess scene. So most oh, of the really? strongest chess players in the U.S. are, they have backgrounds uh, in, in New York specifically. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. I had no idea. I feel like I should have gone to chess tournaments, but I was going to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, so. Yeah. Oh. Love me some Yu-Gi-Oh. Do you what other um do you ever play like what kind of like IRL games do you like? Did you ever play like Yu-Gi-Oh cards or Pokemon or anything like not that? Not really. I mean, I played I played some Magic when I was younger, but oh, not I like magic. Not, yeah. not much, just a little yeah. bit. Um I think the thing is that because I I started playing chess so young yeah. and I had to uh, focus on it probably from the time I was like 10 or around 10 or 11, oh, I didn't wow. really have the chance to to take up a lot of other games. So do you think you knew so at 10 you knew like this is my career? I wouldn't say that I knew it was my career, but okay. I really loved the game. And it's one of those things where when you're trying to get really good, the improvement happens when you're like 10, 11, 12. Yeah. So when you're very young, that's when you're going to improve the most. And so I was just very dedicated and focused. And um, at that time, there were not a lot of um, strong competitions in the, in the United States. Right. So I was actually homeschooled around that age. So I had the opportunity to travel a lot to uh, to Europe and compete because a lot of the, the best players in the world overall were, were playing in Europe. So to keep improving, I, I had to travel a lot and play abroad crazy that's yeah. really that's a very unique awesome upbringing yeah i mean i, I don't think it's that different from like music for example though no, like, there's yeah. a lot of like touring and traveling around yeah uh, maybe like that's more probably within the country as opposed to abroad um yeah actually around, but... for my band mm -hmm. we have a bigger international base than we have okay. a u.s base so we've spent so much time out of the country since we were like maybe 18 oh, wow. a little okay. older yeah. but mm -hmm. yeah i i love traveling and that's kind of why we played do, do, do you like earlier. do you like that though like i love it I, I, I don't know. For me, traveling my whole life, really, I've gotten tired of going to the same places over and over. Really? And seeing the same people and playing in the same venues. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it depends. Like, for us, if we're changing venues or, or visiting different cities. So, for example, in Germany, I don't even know how many. We've done so many shows in Germany. I must have been to, like... It, it might be 20 to 30 cities by now wow. in Germany. Mm -hmm. So that's cool is getting to see different places. But I don't want to take up all of your question space. I want to ask chat, <laughs> too. So... Um, I did this one. I guess someone else asked the same question. Let's see what else we got. Someone goes, we need more pineapples. The chat needs to be more <laughs> fruity. I love that. What's your favorite fruit? Um, favorite Fun question. fruit? Well, it's not, it's not a pineapple. Um, All right. Would have been great. Probably. Would have been great for your brand. I, I don't, I mean, I'd probably say like an apple if I'm being traditional. Yeah. But then, like, I really like pom I like I like pomegranates. Love pomegranates. So that's that's kind of further out there. That's more like healthy. So I but yeah, apple or pomegranate. Those are my two favorites. Speaking of food, because everybody loves food, mm -hmm. where is the best food in the world that you've eaten? What's been your favorite place to travel to and eat the food? Because that can be different. You know, what's, like what's the classification again? Like, are are you talking like? Like the high-end fancy haute cuisine, or are you talking just like anything, street food? Anything. It could be street food. It could okay. be the bougiest of bougie. So like... if we're talking like the haute, haute, haute cuisine, um, I'd probably say San Sebastian or Bilbao in um, Oh, yeah, in, I've been in, to both of those yeah, places. Yeah, in northern Spain. That's Spain. probably my favorite place for that. Um, I loved for San more Sebastian. Like, yeah, that's that's where I had my first real breakthrough as a professional. I played a tournament there many years ago. Oh, that's and amazing. And won it. So, um, yeah, I, I really do like San Sebastian, Build Bow. The beach there is yeah. amazing. Yeah, um, it's gorgeous. In terms of... Uh, in terms of like um, just like street food or just yeah. regular food, I really I really liked uh, Istanbul. I like Turkey a lot. Oh, that. that's cool. I have um, not been to Turkey. That's okay. one of the places okay. on my list. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Um, I, I mean, I, I was I've only been very briefly in Hong Kong, but I also like I like the food in Hong Kong. Oh as my well. god, I love the food in Hong Kong. Like street food in mm -hmm. Asia is like my favorite thing. Any kind of night market, because that's not as common in the U.S. Right. or even even in Europe. Just mm -hmm. the concept of night markets and all the stalls where they all just do one thing. Like not even one right. cuisine, one mm -hmm. dish. One yeah. there's no options. <laughs> right, right, to right. One thing. It's just that one. Yeah. Love mm -hmm. it. I yeah. love it so much. Okay, chat. Um, are if you were going to like chat is like asking so much about blindfolded chess. Mm -hmm. Like, I see so many questions about blindfolded chess, and I've been seeing them, like, the whole stream. Yeah. If you were to come back, would you want to play blindfolded chess? I'm not blindfolded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. um, I guess what I would say about that is I, I, I haven't, I don't know how many I can still do, but I could probably right. do at least 10 at the same time. 
without seeing Ten the board. What? Ten games of chess at the same time without seeing the board. I like the expression on your face. It's like, what? Sorry, what? what? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> yeah. I was like, 10 what? Like 10 pieces? Like right. we don't have all the pieces on the board? Yeah, no, no, I mean, games? I could probably do about 10 games at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Like yes. 10 games. Yes, I mean, it's like literally I can just see the, each of those boards in my Do you head. have photographic yeah. memory? Or are you to trained? Some, I, I think to some degree I do, but I... Uh, but what I will say is it's not like if if like I pick up, I don't know, like a book on what what do I hate? I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that I'm not interested in at all. Um, I won't be able to just remember. Baking? It. So, yeah, something like baking, which I have no interest in. Like if I pick up a book and I read stuff about baking a cake, um, I'm, I'm just not going to be able to remember it because it's not pure like photographic okay. memory. But for things right. that I, I do like or I'm interested in, I can generally um, I do remember it these things and i'm like with chess since i played so much i can like yesterday when i was streaming someone's asking me about a position in a game yeah. i remembered a game that i played uh, about i think it was like 21 years ago it was like 99 um oh. so so yeah like I, I i don't think it's like specific photograph memory but for some things i i can't it's like 98 yeah. percent photographic you just tune Probably. it out at some yeah, of the time something like that yeah. all right well yeah. i love baking so next time you come on the show i'm going okay. to make you a chessboard cake Okay. Have you ever okay, gotten cool. one of those? No, I have not. What about like not. cupcakes, chessboard cupcakes? No, I think maybe once in my life I've had that maybe, but it's not. It's what not about common. what's your? Do you like sweets? Are you a sweets or savory person? Um, you think? Sometimes I like sweets. Sometimes, okay. yeah. What do you yeah. like if you like sweets? Like, what's your what's your go to? Um, I mean, I've always cheap? I've always liked like gelato, for example, just to keep it simple. Love gelato. Um, so like gelato, I mean that's. Have you ever been to Slovenia? Nothing. Slovenia? Yeah. To blood? I've been to blood. Yeah. Um, I've so been to Ljubljana, Ljubljana and I've Ljubljana, been to Ljubljana. Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. to Ljubljana. So uh -huh. they had, because they're so close to Italy, they had mm -hmm. a gelato shop. Yeah. And it was a mascarpone gelato oh, with, nice. like, it was a mascarpone hazelnut, chocolate hazelnut gelato. So Nutella, but like mm -hmm. real Nutella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the best ice cream, like, category I've ever eaten in my entire wow. life. Wow. Yeah, I, I, when, I, when I was in Blood, which there's a really yeah. beautiful lake there, I also had some really good sweets. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've been Love to Slovenia. It's, it's, it's a nice place. All right, well, next time Hikaru comes on, I'm going to have to get him some gelato, apparently. But I'm also <laughs> going to make you chessboard cupcakes. Okay, deal. Yeah, for sure, Is if that's something that you'd be okay with. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, for sure. What yeah. about, like, what's your favorite dish? Favorite dish in general? Um, well, I've always liked sushi. I'm, I'm a big sushi guy. So Love that's, sushi. that's my favorite. All right, we're going to go play some chess in Japan for sure then. And we're going to eat some sushi. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hikaru, you were amazing. The Dreamers are on Val coming up next, so stay tuned for Ven Arcade Live. See you in a bit.